regular cash flows, regular cash flows, basically these are the uniform. Basically, these are the uniform cash flows. We also call them, also known as annuities. Also known as annuities. Annuities, what shall we use to discount annuities? To discount, first of all, annuities are uniform cash flows. Somebody gives me 10, 10 this year. Next year, 10, the other year, 10. So uniform, uniform, a series of uniform cash flows a series of uniform cash flows so in this case here for uniform cash flows normally use what we call the pv far to discount use the pv far to discount regular cash flows use the pv far to discount regular cash flows pv far stands for what in full present value interest factor of an annuity present value interest factor of an annuity Present value interest factor of an annuity. Ladies and gentlemen, how do we write this formula? Present value interest factor of an annuity, to get it right, always remember that you take one and then you subtract the PV formula. You take one minus the PV formula, where our PV formula is one plus R raised to negative N. Our PV formula is one plus R raised to negative N. So we are saying for us to get PV far, we'll take one minus this simple formula. And then everything to be divided by what here? To be divided by R. Everything to be divided by R. Now, ladies and gentlemen, our examiner in the first topic called capital budgeting needs us to understand how to use these formulas how to use these formulas, number one, to make what we call replacement decisions. When should we replace an asset? That's number one. Number two, he wants us to know how to use these formulas for sensitivity analysis. Sensitivity analysis. Sensitivity analysis. Ladies and gentlemen, number three, this person, our examiner, wants us to know how to use these formulas for scenario analysis, the, scene, the various scenes, the three scenes, best case, worst case, base case, the scenario analysis. This and gentlemen, discounting is also needed under what we call capital rationing. Capital rationing. Capital rationing when we have scarce resources. Under capital rationing scarce resources, if you recall, we have the profitability index. And the profitability index, we must be good at these two formulas. We have linear programming. Linear programming, especially where we, we are needed to compute NPV, we must be good at this. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would allow me, I would want us to go straight away to question there, and then we see how good we are in using these formulas on the basis of those areas that we have just mentioned we have mentioned on the base of the areas you have mentioned. And I would want us to start right away by looking at uh, one question here, which will help me introduce this entire concept, which unfortunately are done with the students of mine at RCM. Remember, we always learn best through repetition, don't feel bad. This is the only question that I will do which you are done in the class, eh? just to introduce this. Because I've also discovered most of our students are coming from uh, other colleges. So it will allow me to repeat this very fast. The one of May 2017, question number five, boy. May 2017, question number five, boy. Please open this, May 2017, question number five, boy. May 2017, question number five, boy. I hope everybody has got this question paper. We agree. All of us were to print all those question papers, and then we have somewhere in our file. Or buy this division key. Buy the division key. So May 2017, question five, have we gotten the question? Have we gotten the question? Look at the comments, whether there is somebody who doesn't have. Because this thing of uh, flipping through the question, bringing the question to you online, doesn't work very well for teaching. It works very well for meeting. Eh? Because for a meeting, I throw a document there. Just get page number. Page number. This one is an old one, unfortunately. Uh, the topic is a uh, first topic, it's capital budgeting. 
it's capital budgeting. Capital budgeting, capital budgeting, advanced capital budgeting must be around there, page number 10 or page number. The question itself is called Chuma Limited. Chuma, Chuma Metal, Chuma Limited. Some do not have it. So it means you have to project for them, unfortunately, that wastes our time. How I wish all of us, Mr. Dennis has a link over these past paper questions. Mr. Dennis has a link of the past paper questions. I would really beg Mr. Dennis to send that link to all students. And then now tomorrow when you get a chance at your workplace, please go there and print, or even in town in these cyber cafes, print all those question papers for the papers that you're doing, AMA, SGE, AFM, and if you're combining most of the section six, just print all of them and then create a file, create a file, create a file. Or you can also decide to have like two gadgets, a mobile phone and maybe a tablet, so that when you have downloaded them in one of the gadgets, so you'll be using one gadget to read the questions and the other gadget for video, so that I don't have this question blocking me as I'm demonstrating on the board. So that I want to believe that is agreeable and this is the last time we are projecting these questions. That should be agreed yeah, between ourselves. 20, uh, 20, uh, May 2017, question 5B. May 2017, question number 5B. Even that, you mean you can send them that link to that group and then everybody prints tomorrow. Great, so have you eaten your lunch, my good students? Have you taken your lunch? Is there someone who is fasting? You have eaten, right? <laughs> or it's too early, is it? <laughs> is it if somebody was not eaten, perhaps because they don't have some few coins, right? We can help. We can help. We can help. These are tough times. We understand these are very tough times. Very tough times. Very tough times. So they're able to see it. Eh? It's on the screen. So on the screen, May 2017, question number five, boy. Chuma Limited operates a machine which has the following maintenance costs and resale values over its four-year life. The purchase price of the machine is 25 million. So we have year one, year two, year three, and year four. So maintenance cost, ladies and gentlemen, has been given there. And then they have given us the resale values at the end of each of those years, required advise the management of Chuma Limited on how frequently the machine should be replaced. Advise the management of Chuma Limited on how frequently the machine should be replaced. So ladies and gentlemen, what these people want you to do is to give us net present values for each of those cycles. So they want to test us there or they are testing us on how to apply these very important skills, these very important skills. So we're going to consider all those cycles. So we start with one year cycle. We start with one year cycle. So you mentioned there, one year cycle. So you're going to do one year cycle. We're going to consider replacing after two years, replacing after every three years, and replacing after every four years replacing after every four years. So we start with one year cycle. Remember if it is one year cycle, what do we do? You simply tell us zero, one, one. If it is a two year cycle, let us see. If it's a two year cycle, we talk of zero, one, two, two. I'll explain why we're repeating this. We normally repeat this ladies and gentlemen like the last year. The last year is normally repeated simply because of what? Simply because ladies and gentlemen, would want to, one of the years to take care of what year the replacement aspect, the resale value, the resale value. For you to understand what I'm talking about, listen and listen to me very well. 
I want my cash flow here for one year cycle. So for one year cycle, the cash flows, how will this cash flow look like for one year cycle? Cash flow at time zero. What do you think am I going to factor in at time zero as my cash flow? Time zero is the time of investment. Time zero is when this project will come on board and then we spend the initial cost. So time zero, ladies and gentlemen, you can see they have told us up there before the table, the purchase price of the machine is showing 25 million. So time zero, we shall have 25,000 in brackets, in shillings thousands. In shillings thousands times zero, 25,000 has to be in brackets. Why? Because it's a cash outflow. The machine is coming on board, money is going away like that. And then ladies and gentlemen, now we have bought this machine. We have bought this machine. So we start year one, year one. By the time year one ends, of course, with the machine, we have to maintain it. So you can see the maintenance cost, year number one, the maintenance cost, year number one, is 7,500. Maintenance cost, year number one, is 7,500. So that's 7,500. Should I put it in brackets or in this case, I should leave it like that, positive. That's 7,500. Put it in brackets or we should leave it as a positive figure. Remember, positive means cash inflow. A negative means cash outflow. What are they saying there in the comments? Others are saying in bra? And others? Negative. negative. Thank you very much. Negative because it's a cost. Cost means you're bleeding out money. So it's an outflow. So if it's an outflow, come and put like that. Ladies and gentlemen, remember this is a one-year cycle. We buy the asset at the beginning of the year, stay with it to maintain it for the whole year. And then at the end of that year, ladies and gentlemen, you will be able to do what? At the end of that year, ladies and gentlemen, you will be able to sell it. So have they given us the resale value at the end of year one? If you're to sell this vehicle at the end of year one, how much shall we fetch? How much shall we fetch? If you could display that question for them again, how much will you fetch? Uh, do they have the question on the screen? 15,000. So in this case here, 15,000, you have got two ways you can handle this. Either you come here and they say plus 15,000, or you create a special duration called one, a special duration called one, where you shall just come and record the resale value, which is what year? 15,000. Where you will come and record the resale value for 15,000. And of course, when I sell this particular asset, I'll be getting money. So it's a cash inflow. It's a positive figure. It's a positive figure. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you are trying, even before I talk of discounting, let us do postings for a two-year cycle. We do postings for a two-year cycle, especially as pertains what year, especially as pertains the cash flow. So time zero, what do we have at time zero? Time zero, what do we have at time zero, my great students? Time zero, you are buying, isn't it? And when you are buying, it really doesn't matter when you'll be selling it in the future. At time zero, we are buying, and we're going to buy this thing for 25,000. 25,000. Come here now, the machine, the asset is ours. We are running with it. And if you're running with it, you expect, of course, a few issues here and there with the engines. So you must maintain. So at the end of year one, for the whole of year one, I can see the maintenance is 7,500. So for the whole of year one, the maintenance is 7,500. So I put this in brackets. Again, this machine will be mine for the whole of year two. So the maintenance cost of year two has to be factored in. The maintenance cost, ladies and gentlemen, of year two, if you are keen, you are able to see maintenance cost of year two is 11,000. 11,000 like that. And then at the end of year two, you're planning to do something. At the end of year two, you're going to sell this vehicle. If I sell this vehicle at the end of year two, because it's a two-year cycle, if I sell this vehicle at the end of year two, I can see there is a resale value, a resale value of how much? Who is able to see the resale value of year two? 
10,000, thank you very much. So you see here, year two, there are two things. There is the maintenance cost at year two, and then there is a resale value at year two like that. The mistake you will get so many students doing in this particular area of replacement, you will come and get a student who tells us that uh, uh, it's like you're going to have uh, two resale values. Someone will come and book a resale value at the end of year one. And again, he books a resale value at the end of year two. What a bad omen. What a bad thing to do. It's like you're selling your vehicle twice. You're selling your vehicle to two people. That is proud. Ladies and gentlemen, remember what you're supposed to do. When we talk of a two years cycle, we can only sell this vehicle at the end of year two. We can only sell this vehicle at the end of the year two. So we can only recognize the sales amount of year two like that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, come and look at that. Look at the cash flows that we have. Are these cash flows regular or irregular? I want to discount years, year one, one year cycle cash flows first. So year one cash flows, are they regular or irregular? What are they saying there? Not hearing them. Irregular. Irregular. You can see they are fluctuating. They are lump sum amount. And if they are irregular, then I will come and use what we call the PV. I'll come and use what we call the PV. This examiner was a, a very straightforward examiner. Great examiners, good examiners would want to disturb our students because they have trained our students very well, would want a tough examiner. I normally don't pray for uh, a, a, a simple questions, no. I prepare my students adequately, so I want a very tough examiner. A tough examiner should have introduced working capital. He should have said that we have a working capital of 2,000 bob. So if you, were to, if you were to say that there is a, a working capital of 2,000 bob, how would this schedule change? How would this schedule here have looked like? Somebody, if there was a, a working capital of 2,000, ladies and gentlemen, what would have you put here in time zero? This question doesn't have working capital. And it's so sad for a serious examiner of section five test that such kind of, a, these are section three questions. Section five question, any PV, working capital has to be there. So if you had working capital at time zero, what would have you done there? What they had. You, you would have worked with 27,000, isn't it? 27,000. Because you would have looked at the cost of the asset and the cost of running uh, it in form of what you're working capital. So working capital is normally added to the initial outlay is normally added to the initial outlay and then added to the scrap value. Two things. Remember, working capital is normally put in at the beginning. Working capital is normally put in at the beginning. And this working capital must not, unless we're told otherwise, working capital must always be released at the end of the project. So what have I said, and I hope you've put this somewhere in your mother tongue, that working capital is added to the initial outlay, and it's also added to the scrap value, scrap value. So one, uh, I want us in this case here to look at this. If you don't, don't, write, don't write this. If there was a working capital of about 2,000, then here straight away would have had 27,000 outflow. And then to this scrap value or resale value, I would have also added the 2,000 there. So I would have had what here, somebody? 17,000. Why are we adding this figure of the scrap value? Because the moment you sell the asset, you'll be able to realize the scrap. And the working capital which had been injected into this particular asset at the beginning is also released. Is released. Is released. You can even cram it this way, that working capital, whenever it is given, like they gave us in uh, 2015, working capital, whenever it is given, always add it to the initial outlay, and then you add it to the scrap value. Fortunately, we do not have a working capital here, but if I was the one, if for example, I'm given a chance of uh, testing my students uh, this year, of course now they can't give me because they know I'm Mamze. 
if they were to give me a chance, I would have introduced great thing here. I cannot give you a question without working capital. And then number two, I can't, you know, like this examiner, like this examiner, this examiner, this examiner, this examiner gave us, gave us in the question, you can see it told us that the cost of capital is 10%. How do you tell a CPA section five student that the cost of capital directly is 10%? If you are a serious examiner, you don't do that. A serious examiner will give you risk free rate of return. A serious examiner will give you bitter factor. A serious examiner will come and uh, in this case, they give you market returns. So a serious examiner would need you, ladies and gentlemen, to compute your own cost of capital, your own cost of capital. So in this case, yeah, this was a great examiner, great examiner going to heaven straight away without much questions. Uh, so PV, if, uh, at what cost of capital? The cost of capital provided there is 10%. So once I have my cost of capital, my great students, the next thing will be the formula of discounting. Of course, 10% is on your table. If you look at 10%, you'll be able to see it on your table, but which examiner again nowadays gives you a cost of capital, which is on the table? No, not at this era. Nowadays, the examiner like you saw, was it yesterday in our class, where the examiner gives you cost of capital is 9.2%. 9.2% you can't get it anywhere. You can't get it anywhere. So in this case, here, PV per 10%, we have to cram the formula. The formula of getting uh, PV is 1 plus R raised to negative N. 1 plus R raised to negative N. So then this one here will be 1.1 .1 raised to negative 0. Where have I gotten 1.1 .1 from? Because R is 10%. So 1 plus 10% is 1.1 .1 because 10% is the same as 0 0.1. Raise to negative zero, n is the time period. The first time period here is zero. So can somebody try in this case here to raise this for us? This is where you get a student who is not a very serious one, writing here, or rather, is a you know, you know, the devil. Let me tell you something here. Devil Shaitan. Devil is normally real. The devil exists. From nowhere, a brilliant student simply says that this is what? This is zero. Without using a calculator. Forgetting that, any number raised to zero is always what? One. Always use your calculator. Any number raised to zero is always one. Any number raised to zero is always one. Is always one. And then you come and talk about 1.1 raised to negative n. Our n this time round is one. Our n this time round is one. Which will end up giving us what figure, ladies and gentlemen, 1.1 .1 raised to negative one. Please give me a figure. 1.1. .1. Raise to negative one. Please give me a figure. Please give me a figure. 0.9091, isn't it? Now come and give us the next PV figure. Give us the next present value interest factor figure. The next present value interest factor figure. Is there somebody who is talking about 0 0.8 something? Thank you very much. Trust you me, whatever answer you have given me is very far away from the truth. The truth is there and your answer is on the other side. And in between here, we have got 100 kilometers. Why? Still, we are talking of the end of year what? one. We haven't gone to year two. This is the end of year one. And if it's the end of year one, ladies and gentlemen, the PV should be the same. 0 0.90, 90 watt here. Why do you make use of two and the eight? You can see this is one. This is one. Sorry for that. Sorry for that. So please, if now we are to get up to there, the next thing will be for you to come and give us what we call the PV. What we call the PV, my cameraman. What we call the present value. Present value. Present value. What are we doing to get the present value? We are taking the cash flows multiplied by the PV. The cash flows multiplied by the PV. Two decimal places for the present value. Two decimal places for the present value. So the first one, two decimal places, over here, what do you have here, somebody? 25,000 negative. How about the second one will be minus three times that? Two decimal places, who is able to give us that answer very fast? Sixty-eight 
18.25, and it's a negative figure, isn't it? Two decimal places. Remember, it is only PVs or PV parts where you have to be very concerned with the decimal places, and we always have to go to four. For PV and the PV part, you must always go up to four decimal places. So there we are. We've we'll been able to get the present value for this. How about this other figure? Take 15,000, then 0 0.909 over n, two decimal places. What figure do we have there? Thirteen sixty three. Sixty three point. Thirteen sixty three point five. Six point five zero like that. I hope these figures are correct. And remember, this one is a resale value, so it's a cash inflow. So I should be talking about a positive figure. Once I reach, ladies and gentlemen, come and give us what we call the net present value. What we call the net present value. The net present value. Give us. The net press who is able to see the net present value. You add them because now they are children of the same mother. Because now they have been present value, they have been discounted from the future to today. Now they are compatible for purposes of our addition. Remember, in finance, a shilling today is not exactly equal to a shilling tomorrow. In between here, there is a lot of corrosion of value. Negative eighteen. I'm being given a figure of negative eighteen. One eight one. One eight one. 0.75, double underline that figure, double underline that figure, double underline that figure, double underline that figure. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you allow me, I'll now look for uh, the PVs of year two, to year cycle, to year cycle, come and write a column there of PV at still 10%, PV at 10%, PV at 10%, at times, these little snippets that I normally give you about uh, examiners make me look bad. There are times students have told me, Mwalimu, you are a sadist. No, trust you me. I'm among those people who wish their students here the very best. Why at times I give you those small, small snippets eh, is to enable you understand in this case here what, how a bad examiner can twist the question. Can twist the question. The others who told me, we will talk to Kasnev never to allow you to test us. But I'm not even an examiner with Kasnev. I'm not. I'm not. So don't waste your time going to that place. Very good. So come here. The PV for time zero, what do we have? One. Time one, I'm copying these figures. Time one, we have 0 0.909 red. Time two. Time two, now I have to talk of 1.1 .1 raised to minus two. 1.1 raised to minus 2, what figure do we have there? Time 2, what do we have here, ladies and gentlemen? 1.1 raised to negative 2. I'm being given a figure of 0 0.8264. Ladies and gentlemen, please look at this. This is still time 2. This is still time 2. So time 2, you simply carry the time 2 figure that you had up there. So you should talk of 0 0.8264. So come and give us the last column there for present value. Give us the last column there for present value. Give us the last column there for present value. You are taking the cash flow multiplied by the PV. The cash flow multiplied by the PV. Cash flow multiplied by the PV. What do we have here? We have to multiply. What figures do we have here? The first one is minus 25,000. The second one will be minus 7,500 times 0.991, which will be 68, 68.18.25 negative. Go to the second, uh, this 11,000 uh, times that, please give us a figure. This will be negative something. This will be negative something. What we have there, somebody. So minus 11,000 times this figure, what are we able to see, ladies and gentlemen? Negative 90, 90.4, thank you very much. From there, we go to this other resale value, which is 10,000 multiplied by this. 10,000 multiplied by this will be 8,000, 8,264. Now come and add, I hope my cameraman can still see me all the way up to 
here. So we have what we call net present value. Net present value. Negative. Negative. Six four four. Thank you very much. Negative thirty two point. Point six five. Point six five. Now, could you kindly, great students of mine, do me a favor? Kindly do me a favor by extending the same same skill that I've just shown you for a two years a cycle, and one year cycle, two three years cycle. Could you kindly provide a working for us for a three years cycle? A three years cycle. I'm giving you exactly two minutes.
have they been able to finish these NPVs of uh, uh, NPV for year three negative, uh, even year four they have finished, yes. It's better to place end of year three, don't decide that for us. So they are telling me, Mwalimu, do a summary. Do a summary. Do a summary. Thank you very much. The summary is here. The summary is here. We have what we call net present values. And then we have years. So we have year zero, or rather year one, year two, year three, year four. So if we replace at the end of year one, if we replace at the end of year one, our NPV will be negative 18, 181.75. If we replace at the end of year two, it will be minus 32. Minus 32, 644.65. If we replace at the end of year three, what are they saying there? If we replace at the end of year three, what are they saying there? Somebody check for me. End of year three, what will be the resultant NPV? Negative 44, 66, 5.15. Can somebody confirm whether NPV of replacing at the end of year three is correct? Is this correct? Yes. Thank you very much. How about NPV if we were to replace at the end of year four? At the end of year four? Negative 58. 87 point? Four zero. Four zero. Four zero. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please don't make your decision on the basis of net present values because you can see that uh, our replacements are not of equal lives. Our replacements, ladies and gentlemen, that we have here are coming up with different lifespans. So we need to standardize them. We need to find an average. And for us to standardize, uh, get an average in the usual financial management way, we shall get what we call an annuity equivalent value. So come and give us annuity equivalent, annuity equivalent, annuity equivalent values, annuity equivalent values, what we call AEVs, annuity equivalent values. The question that I have for you, or rather I can even go ahead and answer this question. Ladies and gentlemen, for us to get our annuity equivalent value, we normally take net present value. We normally take the net present value, net present value, divide this by the famous PV far. You divide this by the famous PV far. So the annuity equivalent value. How do we get annuity equivalent value? We'll take the NPV divided by PV fat, like that. It's a formula that you must cram. So meaning, ladies and gentlemen, that we need to come and create a column up here, first of all, of getting the PV fat. And of course, as such, we must be at a position of remembering the PV fat formula. So come and remind us, ladies and gentlemen, the P, I am so sure so many students will not be able to remember the PV formula. PV formula, it's very easy. To get the PV formula, ladies and gentlemen, we normally take one minus the simpler formula, which is one plus R, raised to negative what here? N, raised to negative N. And then everything, ladies and gentlemen, everything will be divided by R. Everything to be divided by R. So we start with the first category here. The first category, remember our R is 10%. So when our R is 10%, what will we talk about? In the first arrangement where N is one, we'll talk of one minus 1.1 raised to negative one. And then everything here to be, to be divided by what here R, which is 10%. Of course, for 10%, it will be nice for me to get the figures from my table. But I know the current exam, and I can tell you without, in this case here, or rather, I can tell you this with a lot of certainty. Nowadays, the examiner will give you rates that uh, you need to remember the formula. So can somebody punch this? When you punch this in your calculator, 
you will say one minus 1.1 raised to minus one, everything to be divided by, to be divided by, by 0.1, which gives us 0 0.90, 91. How about the second scenario when n is two? When n is two, ladies and gentlemen, I'll talk of one minus again 1.1. 1 .1. Where am I getting this 1.1 1 .1 from? Because of r, one plus r raised to negative n, so raised to negative two divided by our constant r, which is 0.1. So what do we have here? We have one minus 1.1. 1 .1. We have one minus 1.1 1 .1 raised to negative two equals uh, divided by 0.1, divided by 0.1, which will end up giving me 1.7, 5, like that. So for negative three, I have one minus 1.1 1 .1 raised to negative three equals divided by 0.1, which will end up giving me 2.4869, 2.4869. And then lastly, we have for year four, year four is a gentleman, I'll talk of one minus 1.1, 1, .1, 1 minus 1.1 1 .1 raised to negative three equals divided by 0.1. I'm able to get 2.4 here, 2.4867 like that. So those are the PV, PV parts that we have. Once I have my present value interest factor of an annuity, don't forget the road to Damascus. What we wanted to get at the end of the day, our objective was to get the annuity equivalent value, the standardized NPV. And how do we standardize this? We normally take the net present value divided by PV. I hope my cameraman is able to see me all the way up to here. I think that, that's yours for year four, is it? Mine for year four, they are telling me, Mwalimu, yours for year four is wrong. Let's repeat, let's repeat. You know, you guys, eh? you are young. You are young with a bright future. So we have here for year four, so one minus 1.1 1 .1 raised to negative four equals divided by, yes, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. It's supposed to be 3 point, thank you very much. 3.1699, thank you very much. And then I'll go ahead and standardize as per that formula, take this column, you divide by the PV per figures. So the first one, I will talk over minus 18. 181, 0.75, divided by 0.9091 which gives us negative uh, 19, negative 19, 999.73, two decimal places. Come and take the next one. The next one is minus 32, 644.65, divided this by 1.7, 355, which will end up giving us minus 18, minus 18, 809. 0.94, two decimal places. Two decimal places. From there we have here, minus 44. 665, 0.15, divided by 2.4869, which will end up giving us minus 17. 960.17. And then we have the last one, which will be minus 58. 837.4, divided by 3.1699, which will end up giving us minus 18. Minus 18, 561.28 like that. So these are the annuity equivalent values. Those values that you have ascertained, which now assume like all the replacement cycles are of the same period, of the same period, same period. Now, with these annuity equivalent values, the way I'm able to see them, it's like all of them are what here? Losses. Losses. And therefore, because I have to go with one cycle, I'll go with that cycle, which will minimize my loss. So this one here, I'll be losing 19,000. I'll be losing 18,000 or something. I'll be losing 17. I'll be losing 18. So then at the end of the day, I'm better off losing 17 than losing more. So in short, this is the optimal value, optimal annuity value, the optimal annuity value. And having known that that is the optimal annuity value, 
Therefore, the optimal replacement cycle, the optimal replacement cycle is a, a three year cycle. Is a three years cycle. So replace at the end of her year three. Every time you find, stay with it for three years, set like that. Very good. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you allow me, if you allow me, is anybody who has a question? Is there anybody who has a question? Is there anybody who has a question? I told you that this was simply a simple question for CPA section three. This now is uh, the question that uh, we should be getting in section five. May 2015, question number one, boy. May 2015, question number one, boy, we could search it for them again. May 2015, you have to get from the revision key. May 2015, question number one, boy. May 2015, question number one, boy. Just move uh, quite fast and get it. Uh. May 2015, question number one, boy. For those students who are following us uh, online, today we have uh, been very good to you. We have given you a whole hour, free of charge, free of charge. So what you do, because you are disconnecting immediately, if you are interested in getting uh, access to our online lecture that will cost you just a hundred bob for a two hour lecture, hundred bob for a two hour lecture, simply call us there. Eh? Call us at this number, 0719-525-1000. This is uh, RCM online college. Yeah? Once you call us here, we shall be able to tell you what you need to do to get connected so that, the, so that you can even continue watching this particular video. Otherwise, for now, thank you very much for watching our online uh, videos. Keep on sharing them. Keep on sharing them. And bye-bye for now. Thank you.